Right, let's move on to the Northeast State because they're starting conference play this coming Friday night. And I think at the beginning of the season, you have to say from what we've seen so far and from what we predicted, it's kind of a three horse race there at the top. When you take a look at East Noble at New Haven and at Leah, what have you seen so far and who are your front runner? Who is your front runner? I should say for this conference. I think right now you got to go East Noble and New Haven one A one B right now. I think they've been impressive both, both weeks, you know, East Noble really bounced back last week and I think really scared some people with what they did offensively with what uh, Andrew McCormick did, what Dylan Hunley did, breaking some records, school records offensively on Friday night. Um, Warsaw 6A team, while they're not cathedral, they're still a 6A team, a very solid 6A program. And for East Noble to go up there, get a win, and offensively showcase what they have has to be scary for New Haven, Leo, and the rest of the NE8. Does any offense have what, they, what it takes to keep up with that? And does anybody have a defense to slow that down? Leo seems to be a little bit of a wild card. I still think, even though we're two games into the season, we might not know exactly what we've gotten Leo thus far. Uh, they beat South Bend Riley. They beat Angola. But still, they've got so many new guys and some moving parts there that I think it's tough to evaluate exactly what they have. I mean, in the rankings, uh, I believe they're up to fifth in 4A, but I still don't know if we have a good handle on what Leo has this year. No, I think Coach Jared Sauter would, would say the same thing. He has so many new players this year and some so many guys in new positions. He says, you know, we probably – he would probably say we're not the fifth best team in 4A, but I think they have the capability of being the fifth best team in 4A by the end of the season. Uh, you know, they start conference play this week, then they have New Haven week four and East Noble week five. So we'll find out just where Leo is. I think a lot of people in Leo are looking towards next year with so many guys coming back, um, but they could be ahead of schedule. I think with a, with, a, with a good group this year that's coming along nicely, they could surprise and really be that wild card in the NE8, uh, you know, kind of lurking behind East Noble and New Haven. With New Haven, what is it that makes them so tough? Because Jim Rowland's been there a long time. He's kind of implemented a system. It seems like they crank out 1,000-yard-plus running backs yeah. every single year. Nishan Jones really no different. And now they've got a starting quarterback who's, who's in his third year as a starter, pretty darn effective with his arm. Yeah, Keyshawn Moore, you've seen him improve year after year. Now in his third year, like you mentioned, really cutting down on the mistakes. We saw a lot of mistakes out of him. Typical underclass mistakes two years ago took a step. Uh, toward the positive last year, really cut those mistakes down, and then is doing the same thing this year and cutting them down further. So when you have a veteran, experienced quarterback that really can control the offense and limit the mistakes, it's going to allow you to do a lot of things. And then when you can hand it off to somebody like Nishan Jones, uh, really minimizes – uh, the amount of stuff you have to do to be effective offensively. So East Noble, New Haven, Leo, your top three, a pretty clear cut, I think, in that conference at this yeah. point. Out of the other five teams, you're talking Belmont, Columbia City, DeKalb, Huntington, North Norwell, who's the one team that can get themselves in the top half of that conference? Because that 3-4 that slot could be, could be open. Yeah, I think Columbia City and DeKalb are both the two teams to watch. I think they're, they're going to improve as the year goes on, and both of them kind of struggled out of the gate, but I think both of them should be better by the end of the year, and we'll start rounding in a form. Those are probably the middle-tier teams in the NE8 for me, and then I think it's a sizable drop to the rest of them, to the final three. And, and I think the you know, Columbia City DeKalb will probably fight over that four or five spot for most of the year.